Well, well, well. Guess who it is? Diesel's back. Join me, subscribe, but get the word out. Diesel's back, and you ain't going nowhere. Hello, people. Hope we're all well. Um, do the stream today to obviously talk about the, this absolute shocker of a game that we saw earlier on. Um, I'm with my man Warren as well. I'm going to bring him in. Here he is. Big up yourself, Waz. Wazaruni, hope you're well. Yo, good, mate. How are you? <laughs> mate. <laughs> Bit of a silly question, really. You're uh, going to find out just how well I'm doing, mate, in the next five, ten minutes. Trust me. Um, <laughs> I really want to talk about this early doors, mate. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to quickly do what I do with the guys in the chat and then we'll crack yeah. on you yeah, because I'm proper okay. wound up. Um, right, let me just quickly start from the top. Uh, Alistair Willis in the chat. Big up yourself, Alistair. Hope you're well, mate. We've got Rodney Fortuere in the chat as well. Brother of Del Boy, big up yourself. We've got Darren Sullivan, a.k.a. Dazzala, in the chat as well. Up you're well, mate. Randy Viper, I'm going to do these Super Chats early doors as well, mate. Do these very, uh, yeah, because you, you you put Super Chats in early doors on my last stream. Randy, I love you, bro. Thank you very much, mate. As I say all the time, it pays the bills. Randy, every year, same result. Where was our star boy? Trust me, I am. I will be cooking him very soon. Don't worry about that. Um, we'll be talking about that, Randy. Trust me, mate. Trust me on that, yeah, because I am absolutely wound up, right? In fact, the, one of the reasons why I got Warren on uh, on the stream with me, we was chatting earlier on, and I've asked Warren to come on just to, obviously, if I do go too far, it's Warren's job to try and calm me down. Um, so, yeah, every, yep, same result. Where was our star boy? Thank you very much, Randy. And another one from Randy as well. Uh, two Super Chats in. Boom. Uh, we need to sell Saka and get maximum money from it. End of the day, he won't win us any trophy. Don't care. He's from Howland. He's inconsistent. And Arteta, out! And trust me, I'm saving the best till last, and that is Michelle. Um, Randy, thank you uh, very much, mate. Really appreciate that. And, uh, yeah, keep him coming. <laughs> um, right, we've got Zoe Thomas in the chat as well. Big up yourself, Zoe. Hope you're well, my love. We've got Kabir Adin in the chat as well. Tony Neri, top man. Hope you're well, mate. We've got Will M. Hooper in the chat. Come on. We've got King Mikel, a.k.a. Young Terence. Blatantly Terry, that isn't it? Um, AJ Bites in the chat as well. We've got Manny. Big up yourself, Manny. Hope you're well, mate. Uh, who else we got? Who else we got? We've got Pepsi Pack in the chat as well. Big up yourself, Pepsi. Um, the lovely Joanne Smith. There she is. Hello, these are my darling. Hello, Joanne, my sweetheart. Hope you're well. Uh, we've got Ryan Stockley as well. Big up, Ryan. Come on. We've got Black Man Dom, my brother. We've got Kevin Mark in the chat. Bye, blimey, Kevin. It's been a minute, mate. Hope you're well. Hope you're good. Make sure you're back for good. Come on, take that settings. Uh, we've got Lucas Hood, 92 in the chat as well. Big up yourself, Lucas, mate. Hope you're well. Footy Chats is here as well. Diesel is pissed. Yes, I am, mate. Can you tell? We've got Naeem AFC in the chat as well. Big up yourself. We've got Lenny Moon, cousin of Alfie. Come on, Lenny. Hope you're well. Harvey Bolton. Come on, Harvey. Yeah, look, look we've got some newbies in the chat tonight as well. We've got uh, Ding Dong as well. Ding Dong, come on. Um... Steve RFC is in the chat. We've got Baroness Thatcher in the chat as well. You remember her, Warren, didn't you, Maggie? Yeah, I do. Oh, yeah, Dave, you saw night. I said that yeah, the woman never slept, mate. She was up all night. She was blatantly <laughs> on the old marching pad. Huh? Come on. Uh, we've got Joseph O'Hanlon in the chat, and I think that is about it. Woo! Breathe. 30 people watching as well. Come on. This is only going to increase, yeah, as the stream goes on, because we've got plenty to talk about. A uh, few people have crept in through the back door. We've got Early Doors Football TV. I'm so glad you're here, mate, because where is where is your brother-in-law? Get him on this show tonight. Tonight. Get him on. All this nicey-nicey nonsense. No, get the man on. Get the man on, Tone, please. I beg you. Do it for me. We've got Stephen Baverstock in the chat as well. Big up yourself, Steve. Up you well. Randy Viper, again, the third super chat of the night, which obviously means he gets to keep the match ball. Randy Viper, where is it? There it is. Waza, my guy, Arteta, bowed down to Unai. Yeah? Come on, Randy. My guy, exactly. See, it's what I love about Randy, yeah? We always think the same thing, right? It's like, it's like one mind. 
Um, right, and I think that is about it. That is about it. Right, okay. Warren, where do we start? Um, let me start with this. I'm gonna ask, I'm gonna ask you. Let me just give you a brief overview, yeah? And then obviously um I'll ask um I'll get your opinion as well. I said this to you um uh before the stream started behind the scenes. I watched that game today, and for me, this loss, and obviously people are gonna be watching this now, they're gonna be thinking, oh look, typical days, oh look, Arsenal have lost, it's only one game. I've I've had that already, Warren, right? A couple of uh as soon as I advertise a stream. Right, you always get the same one or two absolute dickheads, right, idiots, who have to private message me and say, oh, it's only one game, calm down, it's still, well, you know, we're not out of it, all this rubbish, right? Do you know what, guys, honestly, right, the main reason why I've put this stream together, it's not so much the result, it's not so much the result, right? For me, if today doesn't vindicate that this manager needs to go, yeah, then... I, I've got no, I've got no remorse. I've got no sympathy for these Arsenal, these thick, stupid Arsenal fans, Warren. Yeah, today, <coughs> you guys, you watch me all the time, right? Whenever I stream and you guys watch me, I always make a point of saying, right, I never, ever, ever, Diesel never, ever gives these players a pass. Never. Yes, I will blame the manager, but I will also stick it on the players as well, right? However, today. Today, this loss is down to one man and one man only, and that is Michelle. That is Michelle. Michelle lost us this game today. Yeah? Zinchenko, well, when I saw the lineup, Warren, yeah? Zinchenko at left back. He drops Jorginho, right? And puts Havertz in midfield. <coughs> he's tried that before. It didn't work. I don't rate Havertz. I don't. I just don't. I think he's rubbish. Right? However, there is a good old saying. In life, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And the team that he was playing with Havertz up front as the focal point and playing Kirior at left back, it was working and we were winning games, right? Now, we tried this a couple of weeks ago, yeah, when he tinkered with the, with the, uh, the lineup when we was at home to, uh, you know, to Luton. Fair play is Luton, right? They're dog. Yeah, they're dog. Cool. He got away with that. We beat, what was it, 2-0 we beat them. Wasn't a vintage performance, but we got away with it, right? <laughs> to do that again against a good side like Aston Villa, who have a manager, Unai Emery, who is better than our manager, by the way. This is a manager who we binned off for Michelle. And Unai has done him twice with Villarreal, and he's done him again twice this season, taking six points uh, off of us, right? He tinkers with the lineup because he had one eye on Bayern Munich next week. Does he honestly think he's going to win the Champions League? I'm telling you, and Robin, let me just say, right? <laughs> That's another reason I've got you on here because my throat is in bits. Yeah, another reason, right? Is that all these Arsenal fans, when Arsenal went under Unai, when we bottled top four, remember that? Because he put all his eggs in one basket for the Europa. Every man and his dog, right? The vast majority of Arsenal fans wanted him out because he because he did that. Well, tonight, Arteta has done the exact same thing that Unai did. So I want to see the same energy for, for Arteta as to what they showed Unai. Yeah? Because let's have it right. Pound for pound, Unai is a much better manager than Michelle. That's a fact. No, no. This ain't no fluke, right? He lost it today. The substitutes he made were absolutely disgusting. They were poor. But that lineup, Zinchenko, amount of times I've been on here backing him up. And yet every time I see him at left back, he's an absolute joke. If you see their first goal and you see his positioning for that, where was he? What was he doing? He looked, he looked like he was in his own world, right? You've got Partey on the bench. I'm not a lover of Partey. Right, but you're telling me you're not playing Partey, you're not playing Jorginho, and you're going to play Kai Havertz in that midfield role above them two. We're out, Warren, we're out of it, right? Yeah. Win your home games, bare minimum, win your home games. We were, we was okay in the first half. <laughs> Second half was probably the worst half I've seen this season. Aston Villa, right, which is absolutely balling out. 
Yeah, it showed us no respect. Those goals, that oh, that Ollie Watkins goal was class, by the way. Yeah. yeah. And do you know what? You've got to give your hat off to Aston Villa. Fair play to them. They had a game plan. What we need to understand, and I've said this, Warren, and so have you, when, you, when you're dealing with Unai Emery, you are dealing with an extremely tactically astute manager, right? Unai Emery ain't no dickhead, right? He's very tactically astute. And we saw that yet again today, right? And I'm sorry, mate. Today is on it's on Michelle. And he needs to go tonight. And do you know what? For all my friends who are also Arsenal fans who always call me up when Arsenal win, funny how they've not called me up once today. They haven't called me up. They haven't called me. So they go hiding as well. And these are my friends, right? My boys. Yeah. And yet they're not calling me. Where are they? Yeah. <laughs> what, what's the excuse going to be now? Oh, what, Man City are too good. Today wasn't down to like Man City, Warren. Today was down to us. Today was down to the manager. Mm. But that'll be the narrative. If Man City win it, which I think they will now, <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, would you expect these? They're too good. We're going up against a, a, a powerhouse like that. How can we... It, it's rinse and repeat the exact same as last season. For mm. Mate, the man's got... He's got to go tonight, Warren. He's got to go. Mm. He's not good enough. I'm sorry. Like, today should show everyone... Actually, Christ, shit, maybe Diesel had a point here. Maybe he's got a point. He's not good enough, right? S 70 minutes. The big hole in the stadium. Do you see how many fans left? I know. Two-faced, absolute bastards, a lot of these Arsenal fans. And I hope they're watching. Absolute scumbags, you scrubs, all of you. Seriously, I'm, I'm honestly, mate, trust the process and all this rubbish. Yeah? No, mate. Warren, go and carry on. Well... I mean, the thing is, like, watching that game today, I kept getting flashbacks, right, to about two, no, maybe three years ago, right, when you and Terry were doing that watch-along for that Villa game at the Emirates, right, and Jack Grealish absolutely destroyed Hector Bellerin, right, and the... It went 1 0, then it went 2 0, then it went 3 0. And they were, they were going for more. And it wasn't even like they were going, okay, right, we know we're going to hold off now and we'll just take what we've got and whatnot. They kept going and going and going and trying to get more. And I kept getting flashbacks of that and like listening to you losing your, your rag with um, Bellerin and having a go at Terry because he was trying to defend the team and the manager and all this carry on. And it was just, it was shocking because Ollie Watkins hit the inside of the post and he could have had two or three today. He could have, no word of a lie, mate. It could have been four or five. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't like a lucky, you know, two nil win where they broke away a couple of times and, got in. No, it wasn't. They they had very good chances to like put put us to bed big time. Right. And I have to say, I've I said it last season. I put out this theory about why I thought it had happened. And I, I'm I think I'm right because last season and the season before, as soon as they, the Arsenal, had achieved European qualification for the next season, they just collapsed. So the targets have been achieved. There's no incentive on them to go and progress on and win trophies. They've done what they needed to do, and that's it. They've packed up shop and gone home. And it's happened again this year. So that's three years on the bounce that this has happened. So one year, yeah, maybe. Twice you're saying, well, this is a bit odd. But three years on the bounce, exactly the same, same things happening. People have got to start asking questions. Because... Yeah, but they won't know, they won't know, will they? That as soon as we qualify for Europe the next season, that's it. It all falls apart. Surely someone somewhere has got to start thinking, hold on a minute, something's not quite right here. 
Do you know, and I know it sounds a bit of a conspiracy theory, and I am a conspiracy theory person, but look at the facts. Just look at the facts of it, right? It is shocking, mate, honestly. And you're right about Michelle. He, she, he, whatever you want to call it, is not good enough for this football club. He was never been good enough. No. The guy is a fashion model, and that's it. Do you know it, what? I've, I've said this to you before, right? I said this to you. And I know a lot of the people in the chat were laughing at this, right? And they think they like they obviously like they think I'm on banner, yeah, which a lot of the time I am, right? But on this occasion, when I say to you, it's because he's he's in a lot of people's eyes, he's he's a good looking guy. I generally believe that plays a part, Warren. I, I, I know a lot of people think I'm joking, right? But like, I'll say that, yeah. I generally believe, right? You know, like the Gucci jacket, whatever it is, yeah. Like you know, best looking Spaniard, all that rubbish. I do think that plays a part, especially, especially in the media. I really do believe that, right? I, I, I generally do believe he is the most protected man. I thought Arsene Wenger was protected. My God, Wenger's got nothing on this man, yeah. nothing on this man. I'll tell you that now, right? That is an absolute fact. Yeah, I thought today was going to be a draw, right? And I'll tell you something, right? We were winning games on the trot, you know, not conceding goals. We played by Munich, right? They put two past us. And let's, let's have it right. They should have won it, really. Yeah? Right? They played really well. And now for a team to do that away from home with no fans tells me what... I have to ask the question. What are they going to do in their backyard with their fans on side? Right? Now... The, the reason why I've put the thumbnail to this stream, guys, you uh, boys and girls watching, <clears throat> you know, typical same old Arsenal. What I mean by that is that we played Bayern Munich last week, right? We got a, a two-all draw out of it. Yeah, we conceded a couple of goals for the first time in God knows how long. And all of a sudden, in my head, Warren, I'm thinking, right, because of that setback last week, now it's about character. Can they bounce back? Right, because now the pressure's on. Right, we've got a home game against a decent side, but we're at home. We're at home in front of all our fans <coughs> in our own backyard. This is a game we had to win. Yeah, Liverpool lost one nil today. The players would have seen that, so there was an even bigger incentive for Arsenal to go out there <coughs> and win the game. Man City won yesterday again. Another incentive for Arsenal to go out there. And win the game. And look what happens. Yeah? Because we had a touch of reality last week against Bayern Munich. Now, look, the real Arsenal show up. And I've always said this, Warren. Right, Warren, you watch me religiously. I, you know I say this. When there's no pressure on, Arsenal can play anyone in the world and, and, and look good. Right? They can ball out. Mm. See when pressure's applied after a dodgy result like that last week? All eyes are on Arsenal today. Man City won yesterday, Liverpool lose. Right, Liverpool lost, over to Arsenal. Let's see what they can do. <coughs> can they capitalise, yeah? Straight away, oh, pressure. Pressure. That's pressure. And not only that, we're playing against our former manager, right, who's done the dirty on Michelle a couple of times previous, or three times, right? Again, straight away, pressure. And look at today. Look at it today, mate. Look at it. That's what I'm saying. It weren't a case of, you know, we play. Aston Villa played on Thursday, Warren. Thursday. So if, if, if people want to go down the fitness route or the physical side or whatever, they looked fresher than what we did. They looked sharper than what we did, and they played Thursday. Yeah, I, I was listening Come to on. someone. Who was it? Former Ray Houghton was going on about that. He said the Villa looked fresh. They looked up for it and you know and he said Arsenal just looked jaded and yeah. like, I'm sitting there and I'm thinking why is that the whole of their spine the goalkeeper Emmy Martinez I want to talk about him in a minute yeah. Emmy Martinez the centre back John McGinn and Ollie Watkins through the that spine of that team were absolutely superb they destroyed us they couldn't cope with any of those players. Yeah. It's shocking. 
Do you know what how I mean? Many times, how many times, right, have I raved on this channel about, about John McGinn? He yeah. is a very good, industrious midfielder, mate. He works hard. We got Havertz. They got John McGinn. I'll take McGinn in the hobby. He's yeah. a good player. But you know what? They were, they were, um, Villa were organised today, were not? You know, like they had a game plan. And yeah. do you know what? This is what makes me laugh, right? About, you know, when I hear pundits and people on those other shit channels, Arsenal channels, whatever. Oh, you know, big and scary Arsenal, this, that, the other. Aston Villa scored one, then they scored two. They wanted to get a third, right? They didn't shut up shop and try and protect a 2-0. They wanted to hurt us. They yeah. wanted to hurt us. They wanted more. They're in their backyard. Did they show us respect today? No. No. Exactly. And that's what I meant about the flashbacks. When I was saying it was giving me flashbacks. Because I remember you saying exactly the same thing about three years ago when they come to the Emirates and turned us over 3-0, right? You were going absolutely crazy about it and saying, look, we're 3-0 down and they still want more in our yeah. backyard. Do you know what I mean? And it was the same today. They were looking for three. They were looking for four. Do you know what I mean? They didn't just like say, okay, we're tuning up. <clears throat> There's a few minutes to go. Let's just shut up shop now and be done with it. Though they were going for it, mate. Do you, know what, do you know what really pisses me off, right? Like, so like, like you're saying now, I remember doing all those watch-alongs, right, with young Terence and, and Claude, may he rest in peace. And I always made a point, of, exactly what you said there. How can we be 2-0 down? I always use Man City as the Arctic, right? And like, why wouldn't you? You know, they're the best side in the league, right? <clears throat> Even they've had a massive drop-off this season. And look at where they are. But anyway, right? They're three nil up. They're three nil up, and they are working their socks off. We are two nil down, and they're working harder than what we are, and they're three nil up. Mm. You know why, Warren? Because they've got a manager. They could be six nil up, seven nil up. If they're seven nil up, Pep wants eight. If they're eight nil up, Pep wants nine. If they're yeah. nine nil up, Pep wants ten. This is a manager who does not let them breathe. He does not let them. Be comfortable for any longer than five minutes. That is a winner. Look at the players he drops. The Kevin De Bruyne. No one is bigger than Pep, right? He is. Look how he was with Aguero when he first got got there. Aguero was the superstar, <laughs> and even Pep said, "You can, you can be better. I want more." And if you remember, he dropped him for about eight, nine games and played That's the right. other, the Ionichi or whatever his name was, yet yeah, in front of him. This is Aguero. Name me another manager who would have the bottle to do that, yeah? yeah? This is what I'm saying. And everyone tells me that Michelle was the reincarnation of Pep. He is nowhere near Pep's oh, no. level. Oh, no. He's not a winner. I'm sorry. And today, what he did today, that is a suckable offence. That lineup, the substitutions. And this is what I'm saying, Warren. Everyone telling me, oh, come on. You know, I made a point of uh, last week uh, on the stream. I did, uh, you know, my mate John. Oh, yeah, well... You know, he's got one more season. And if he doesn't win anything this season, he's got to go. But because we're winning games left, right and centre, <laughs> and once again, the narrative changes. Once again, oh, actually, because I like what I'm seeing now, he can stay, he's fine. Mm -hmm. You know, because a lot of these he's Arsenal fans, well, they want top time. four more. They just want top four. I think Ryan Stockley said it earlier on. They want top four. And now that top four is secured, yeah? Oh, well, if we win the league, it's a bonus. But if not... At least we're in the Champions League next season. For what? Losers, mate. Absolutely losers. I don't care who watches this and what? don't like what I'm saying. Losers. Scumbag. What, what, what is it giving us? This is what I want someone to explain to me. What is this top four thing? What are we getting out of it? We're not getting a trophy. No, it goes back to us and Wenger, Warren. This is why I'm so hard on Wenger on this channel. Because he started this. He started this. This mm. top four is a trophy nonsense. And a lot, and a lot of these facts, because, look, because Arsenal are infested with a lot of these people who just haven't got a mind of their own, yeah, which is why they all follow AFTV, which is why they all follow all those other channels, yeah, right? Because they need someone to tell them, like, what day it is, because they don't know what day it is, Warren, yeah? Mm. This is what I'm saying, yeah? That is why, right? So because they can't think for themselves, they bought into what Wenger was selling. 
Cop fours a trophy doing a jig on the touchline, yeah? Yeah. Do you remember that? Yeah, I do. I do. <laughs> exactly. That's yeah. what I'm saying. The, the thing is, as well, Diesel, what annoys me about Michelle, right? And it was highlighted today, big time. Their goalkeeper, Emmy Martinez, right? He allowed him to leave the club. And he preferred to have Leno rather than Martinez. Right? Since he's left, he's won a World Cup. We have spent something in the region of maybe £70 million or more trying to get a decent goalkeeper. None of them has been anywhere near as good as what Emmy is. Even this current one, I'm sorry. No, I don't no, 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 no. Much better than the the fella from Yorkshire that we had, Sheffield or whatever it was. I don't think there's much much difference between the two of them. And there's certainly none of them have been as good as what he has. So the question is, why is he? did he allow him to go? I just don't get it, mate. It's just absolute madness. Listen, yeah, this is another thing, Warren. This is another thing, yeah, that that a lot of people have conveniently forgot. Yeah, how he gave away a World Cup winner. Yeah. Because Martin, at that time, he was proper. He was quality for us. Yeah, quality. Yeah. And you let him go, right? Like, you showed your loyalty to Bert Leno, who we eventually sold to Fulham. And even then... Fulham didn't want to, they were haggling over the 8 million, mm. right, to buy him. 8 million, which in football terms is like, what, a couple of quid to me and you? A couple of quid if that? Yeah? Mm. We're not going to miss it, right? Fulham, Bert Leno, you know, and I, it's just, it's, it's it's decisions like that. How no one, I, I'm, I'm, there's been, I'll tell you what, I, I need to read these out to you, right, because I have to take pictures, yeah? For, for whatever reason, guys, every time I advertise a stream now, and I always used to advertise it on X or Twitter, whatever it is. And for, for for whatever reason, it's not picking up my posts anymore on Twitter. I don't know what what's what's going on, but whatever. Right? There was a few of these worrying, yeah. Now I I took pictures. Some geezers put this right. Arteta moved away from the Havertz midfield experiment, and Zinchenko was benched. We went on an amazing run. So what does he do today? He puts Havertz in midfield and Zinchenko back in. Effing insane, unforgivable decision. Fact, whoever wrote that, some guys are called A, whatever. Facts. Yeah. Facts. If you ain't broke, don't fix it. And look what he did. He broke it today, right? Another one. Uh, oh, this is from uh, Fabrizio uh, Romano. This is, uh, this is what Arteta was quoted as saying after the game. If one result is going to block us, that, that, that then we are not strong enough. If you want to win titles, when, when you have this moment, you have to stand up. In any other league in the world, if you won the number of games in a row that we did, you would be six or eight points clear. That is not the case here in this league. That is the challenge. Let's don't try and gaslight us, Michelle. Yeah, it, all that nonsense anywhere else. You're not anywhere else. You're in the Premier League. Yeah, you are paid an extreme, obscene amount of money to get us over the line. And yet again, right? You bottled top four. You bottled. Uh, the league last season and you've bottled it again today. That's three, right, Warren? Three. And I'm not waiting around to see it happen for a fourth time. This is where Arsenal now, the fans, I know this will never happen, but in an ideal world, we can all be a we can all we can all dream. We gotta to come together now and say enough's enough. Right? Let me read you this one one more, Warren. One more. Some geezer called Mike, right? And he he got this bang on. Hear this. So you were telling me they sacked Unai Emery, gave Arteta a contract for winning a COVID trophy with Emery's team, watched him sell it and give their best player away, give Arteta another contract, give him a dog, give him 700 million to spend, only to win nothing and bottle the title to Emery. Facts. That's a fact. <laughs> no. 700 all... million. We've given the geezer a dog, right? Oh, no. For vibes. No. Vibes. It's the whole thing. No. Wait, Diesel, I'm so disillusioned with Arsenal at the minute, right? Uh, last few weeks, I've just been referring to it as Arteta FC because it's the only way I can cope with 
watching what is going on. Because for me, the whole thing is an absolute joke. It is. It's a joke. Like, the whole club has been turned into a circus. You know, and like... Del Boy the other day, he sent me this thing. It was in the Irish press about something that the Liam Brady, Frank Stapleton, Sammy Nelson, they all did it at the London Irish Centre. And they were sitting there talking about Arsenal in the old days. And Noel mm -hmm. Quinn was involved as well. And they were talking about the standards of the club. Yeah. And like Noel Quinn was going on about how when he was at Arsenal, if they were in a calf, he learnt to take his plate and knife and fork back to the counter when he'd finished, right? Now, people will go, well, what's he talking, what's what I'm going on about? But what I'm going on about is this is an example of the standards of behaviour <laughs> and the way of doing things that Arsenal used to have back in the day. And we've got this guy now who's lying an FA inquiry into his behaviour so that he can get off. And, that, like, he, he's hoodwinking fans, gaslighting us. And, like, it would not have happened years ago. And then you had David Dean coming out and saying how he would have had to pulled him into a side room and warned him about his behaviour. Do you know what I mean? And this, like... This guy, he's had £700 million, and like that fella said, he's won one COVID trophy with someone else's squad and done nothing. He's been given a dog, like he said, and like it's just unbelievable. Imagine what Unai Emery would have done with £700 million. Do you know what, right? When, when, you, um, when you think, when you look back and you think, the amount of Arsenal fans and also the Arsenal players who handed that man out. And I've always, you know, to a point where, you know, everyone thought, oh, I'm like, you in love with this guy, whatever. You know, I, as you know, I have so many rounds with, you know, Terence over this as well, yeah? Because Terence never rated him. I, but last time he came on this channel, on the stream, he actually said, I've got it wrong about Emery. Yeah? And he did say that. He got it wrong about Emery. Yeah, because he is a good manager. That ain't a fluke, Warren. He's yeah. tactically astute. The one thing that we've been yeah. crying out for is a manager to manage this club who's tactical, who's got, so, who's got tactical acumen. Yeah. This manager, right, and do you know what? The, one thing I, the only thing I will say about Michelle, right, and, you know, going back to what you said earlier on about the top four thing, as long as they get their top four, I genuinely believe Michelle wants to win the title. I don't, I don't think he's into this top four nonsense. I will say that. The one thing I will, the one thing I will say about him, he wants to win. He wants to win the league. He's not content with top four. My issue is he's not good enough. Mm. He's not. I don't. It's not personal. I've always said that. Not personal, right? Because everyone used the Abamyang thing, right, to beat him with a stick. Yeah, I didn't because I backed him over that because I didn't want Abamyang here. I was with me, uh, Michelle on that. Yeah, no, so no. I can stick up for him. Yeah, but. If today's taught us anything, it's what I already knew. So when everyone's getting hyped and excited about the league, and I'm the one who's on this channel saying, look, guys, cautious, calm down. We haven't won it yet. We haven't won anything yet. Relax, right? Don't put the bunt in at yet. You know, the parade. No, not yet. Wait. Let's just wait and see. There's eight games left. Let's wait and see until the end of the season. Yeah? So stop taking the piss out of Spurs or Man United or Man City or Liverpool. We haven't won anything yet. People in glass houses, right? Let's just wait and look what happens today. Okay. Egg on face. It's an egg on face moment, isn't it? Mate, it's an egg on face. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, this whole thing about oh, yeah. celebrating it's stuff. About learn, Warren. Happened. I learned this lesson by watching what Spurs did. I was at White Hart Lane the night that Rocky put us through to the League Cup final, right, in 1987, right? Ten minutes to go in that game, this guy from Tottenham came over on their channel announcing all the Spurs fans, who were winning 1-0, by the way, in their League Cup semi-final replay, how they could get their tickets for Wembley. And I've since heard from players 
that it motivated the Arsenal players beyond belief, right? And they went on and won the game 2-1. So that was a perfect example of why you should never, ever, ever celebrate anything until it's delivered, right? Because Spurs were looked to made to look stupid over what they did that night. Because we then, as soon as that came on over the Tannoy, it just inspired Arsenal. And in a couple of minutes, we were 1-1. And then, like, right before the end, Rocky popped up and bang, it was 2-1 and the rest is history. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And, like, these fans, they just, like, they keep celebrating stuff before it's been delivered. You know, and I've seen fans in in different forums going on about how we're going to do this and we're going to do that. We're going to win Champions Leagues. We're going to win the Premier League. Not with his manager, we ain't. No. Big up, Flo, by the way. My good friend, mate, Flo. Big up yourself, mate, from down under. Look, what he says here is, is bang on. And this is, this, this is what we've been saying for time. Yeah. Big D in the house. Once again, Arteta has, has proved, has just proved yet again that he's a bottler and that's his legacy. It's time to go bring in a winner to get us over the line. Have we got a squad to win the league? I'd say yes, Warren. Don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. Right? We need, a, we need to add to it. Yeah, we need some world-class, but we, ain't, we haven't got one world-class player um, in that, not team, squad. Not one. Mm. And that will bring me nicely into Saka and Odegaard, and all those supposed world world class bowlers there, because that's what everyone tells me, yeah. But he's right. We need we need the winner, right, to get us over the line, and it's a fact. Yeah, it's a fact. How many chances are we going to give this guy? No. Yeah, people get gas, and this is what I'm saying, Warren. Everyone, and you know this, Warren, because you've had people like, on your channel saying it as well. At the start of the season, everyone said, "Right, I'm going to give him one more season. He's got this season." I'm going to give him one more chance, but he's got to win something. If he doesn't win anything, then he's got to go. Now, now, what is it? What, 14th of April? Now, a lot of people are saying, well, actually, I know I said that. I know I said that. But having looked at it again and analysed it again, we are playing good football. He has, you know, put us on a winning run and we have secured top four. So, yeah, it'd be nice to win the league. But even if we don't, then... You know, we are winning games and we're in the Champions League again next season. So even if we don't beat Bayern Munich and don't go through, we're still seeing champagne football and, you know, you, you know they're selling popcorn at the Emirates now and it's, it's all vibes and we're all getting on and we're mm. all getting our money's worth. And, yeah, we know they put the, the ticket prices up, but, you know, it's cost of living and... Arsenal need to make a buck or two, and yeah, Warren, I'm so I can't get on board with that. No, no I can't. Right, I'm, that, that is exactly. No, do you know no. what? The majority of Arsenal fans who I talk to are exactly like that. They are living in Disneyland, right? It's all Dream World, yeah. They think it's all Disney. It's all nice. It's all candy floss, pink ribbons, and 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 fluffy dogs, and and you know, it's it's like the labyrinth, isn't it? Like like that film, the labyrinth. It's all yeah. It's all. No, 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 no. Clouds in the sky. No, sod that. Marshmallows and all them type of thing there. No. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. No, it's absolute rubbish. And this is what I'm saying, mate. This is why, like, you know this. This is so many rares I'd with young Terence because young Terence is exactly like that. What I can't forgive, right, it's, it's different. Like, I get some 14, 15-year-olds, like, chatting absolute crap to me, Warren, yeah? I can kind of accept it because at their age, with all due respect, they don't really know any better, right? They grew up in the Wenger era. What do they? They've not seen what we've seen, right? I kind of give them a bit of a pass, give them a bit of a bligh, because they don't know any different. For me, that's for their their dad or their granddad to try and educate them. Yeah, that's not that's not my job, right? Mm. Because normally, most normally, nine times out of ten, you know, you support the team who your dad supports. You know, you you follow yeah. your dad, right? You know, nine times out of ten. So I would assume that that would be the case. But when I'm hearing grown men my age and older than me trying to say this is the calibre, this is the manager, and these are the players, when you're my age and you've seen what I've seen, you've seen the players who have rocked up at Highbury and the Emirates, and I'm expected to tip my hat to this lot? Mm. No, I'm, no, no, no. And every five Thanks. minutes on social media... Yeah, you know, another win today. Woo! 
Oh well, you know, we go again. All that. No, no, no. Look, no, you get that. no, no. See, the thing is, Arsenal Football Club is a very, very special club. Right? It is. Is like, and there are lots of special football clubs in this country. Liverpool's a special football club. Manchester United is. Everton is. But none of them are like Arsenal. I used to work with this fella who was a reserve player at Arsenal during the 30s. When I first started work in the 80s, he was working there. And I remember right, one day we were talking about football and he asked me, I was supporting, and I said, Arsenal. And he said, listen, I used to work play for Arsenal. He said, and as a reserve player, and he said, I went off to a few other clubs. He said, no other club I ever went to was anywhere as special as what Arsenal is. He said, there's something magical about that club. <laughs> and these players need to be understand how lucky they are to be playing for this club, right? Because it is special. And, you know, I'm sure on, on next week when we do this show about your life as a fan, Diesel, I'm going to hear lots of stories about how special Highbury was and all the rest of it, you know, and like it just annoys me. Like these, some of these players, when they come out and play for that club, they're not giving a hundred percent. You know, it, it, it's just it's not acceptable to me. You, you know, know and then you've got yeah, fans yeah. like gassing up absolute rubbish, like, See, the way that they do. You know, you know what it is, yeah. Read this comment right now. Look, there's part of me that thinks this Khalid is this Khalid. He must be on banter. It must. He's got to be on banter. He's got to be right. Either that, or this is must be Terry's cousin or something. I don't know. Yeah, no, right? that's just ridiculous talk. I'm hoping. I'm hoping that that he's banter and he's he's just trying to he's just trying to like pull my leg and like trying to catch a bit of joke. Yeah, because but there's part of me that thinks he's actually being serious. I'm, I think this is the guy. It was putting some nonsense in my stream before. Yeah. Now, when you read that, this, this, he is not, let me just like, you guys, look, there's 55, 60 people watching, right? So I'm going to leave this comment up for a while, yeah, because I want you guys to really take this in. Because I, I first, when I first read this, I thought this Khalid Mansour, I mean, even the name's jokes, but I thought this guy's on banter, yeah? Now, already I know this, this he's, he's got to be young. This, this can't be my age. He's got to be sort of late teens, early 20s at the most, yeah? Mm. I'm leaving this up, Warren, up, because this is what I'm saying about the the the, the majority, not all of them, but the majority of Arsenal fans, yeah? They, they have this mindset. They have this mindset. It's the pressure. We are now in a world, yeah, where mental health is the rage. It's all the rage. Mental health is the rage. Pressure. See that word, pressure. This is why that thumbnail... Typical same old Arsenal because we crumble under the pressure. Mm. When there's no pressure on us, yeah, we can kick ball, we can play ball. Lovely, nice, champagne, right? When there's pressure applied, that's where you see the real Arsenal. They can't handle it yeah, no. right? because we don't have men at this club, right? We've got boys, and that is the big difference, yeah? Now, this is why, Warren, it's unforgivable, right? I can't talk to people my age about Arsenal who are like young Terrence or, you know, my mate John. Yeah, because you're my age. You've seen Arsenal under George Graham. Mm -hmm. You've seen the Thierry's, the Tony Adams, the Martin Keown's, you know, you know, yeah. that old daddy show, uh, you know, away on a rainy night in Stoke and all that rubbish, right? Yeah. We had play, we had men who could mix it, play, fight, mm -hmm. kick, punch, slap, this, that, that, that. They could do it all. Mm -hmm. And I meant to I meant to be bowled over by, by this lot we're seeing now. That would be Players that have always played would not have week. happened under George. But look at that. It, look. it just would not have happened because, yeah. well, it may have happened once, but he would have absolutely killed those players if they played like that. Then the, enough of them would never have played for the club again. But that's my point. George, yeah, he would have. No, you're right. But before they got to George, George wouldn't have had to because for right in the time that George is walking over to you, Right, right, to bust your head. Tony Adams is beating him to it. Martin <laughs> Keown is beating him to it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Lee Dixon, yeah. Winterburn, they're beating him to it. George didn't yeah. have to do it. George had one yeah. of the easiest jobs ever, really. Yeah. Because he, he had his he had his marshals in that team, 
right, who could kick ass for him. See, look, this uh, playing twice. It's a young side. Again, a young side. A young side, Warren. A young. This is all I keep hearing. They're young. They'll learn from this. They'll they'll be stronger as a group. No, rubbish. Right? It's the same excuses year in, year out. And I'm sick of it. Khalid, I can't even keep that on. That comment you're on, ba Khalid, you're on banter, bruv. You are on banter. I'm telling you now. You're trying I, to get I'm in the It's just mental. Because that comment that he, he made about the money that Pep's had, right? I'd like to remind him that Arteta's had more than him. Pep hasn't had 700 million. <laughs> I can't remember how much it is, but it's way less than that. This is what makes and he's won laugh, nine yeah. trophies in the time that Arteta's been at this club. And this man has won one trophy in a COVID season with another man's squad. I mean, it just does not make any sense whatsoever. And I reckon that comment was put in by Terry. I don't. I think it, that Terry he's got a few burner accounts in here tonight, and that that man's sort of character. I think it's Terence. Yeah, no, like, no, 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 no. he's, he's, like he's, he's on banner. Look, if you read this one, he's put. He's on. He's 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 on banner. He is. He's on banner. He's, he's, this is a stand-up comedian, mate. It, this is like Mickey Flanagan's cousin or something. It, it, <laughs> there is no way. There's no way that is a that is from a sane. <laughs> Arsenal, that is someone who's in serious need of therapy. So that must be young Terence. Yeah. It's, it's got to be Terence. It's got to be. Needs yeah. therapy, man. The man's not well. A certain channel saying it's not over yet. As much as I, I bet I know who, who that channel is as well. I don't even. Yeah. It's, a, it's EastEnders, man. It's a soap opera. Rex. Certain channel saying it's not over yet. As much as I hope I'm not delusional, I'm not going to break my heart over it. Uh, it's not over. Listen. We, Robert, right. Look, this is what I say, right. I'm always going on about the cautious thing, yeah, because this this club, last this time last season, right? I must admit, like they 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 proper suckered me in, right? They they you know they tricked me. I, I come on here and I went, oh my god, I actually I, I think we're going to do it. I think we're going to do it, and I got myself hyped up. Eight points clear, right at one stage, what around Christmas January time, and I, in my head. I thought, my God, it's got Arsenal's name all over it. We, we were just, you know, destroying teams. There was no way we could lose it. In my head, this is it. This is the moment we, we've all been waiting for. And lo and behold, we bottled it in spectacular fashion. And I said I said to you guys in the chat, never again will I let this, this club fool me like that. Never again. So now, now, and this is where Arsenal fans don't learn, Warren. Like we saw what happened last season, that capitulation. Fast forward this year, and we're still falling for the same tricks year in, year out. Yeah, I'm going to fall for it once, never again. Now, I'm like, nah, until it's mathematically impossible for anyone to catch us, then yes, I will celebrate. But I have to wait and see until they're holding that trophy aloft. Yeah? Because we know this team, Warren. We know this team. Uh -huh. There is something of a mentality problem at this club. It's been here for time. Yeah, it's been here for time. Mikel, Michelle, sorry, almost said his name. Michelle, don't get me wrong, I think wants to win the league. No issue with that. He ain't one of these top four merchants, right? But he's not good enough. And as a result, that team, although they're good on the ball, technical flair, skill, yeah, lovely, jubbly, nice, nice, nice. The psyche, and I've always said this, this is my favourite word on this channel, the psyche, there is something in their psyche Today, they look jaded. Today, they look like they... First half, they weren't that bad. Second half, we were shocking. We looked leggy. We looked like we didn't want it. We, we looked like we didn't know what to do. It looked like 11 strangers on the pitch. And Randy Viper, if you're still watching, mate, just going back to your Super Chats, now is the perfect time to start talking about the apparent world-class Nigerian star boy, uh, Bugayo Saka. Let's talk about Saka, because I'll tell you something now. With what I'm about to say, I'm probably going to lose my friend, John, because obviously John loves Saka to bits, yeah, my mate. And I'll tell you something, I'm not seeing what John's seeing. I had a round with two of uh, my friends, Warren, yeah, at a party, right, recently, <coughs> because they both reckon Saka's world-class. And I was saying, no, he's not. He's nowhere near world-class. Good player. Good player. I'm not saying he's crap. 
but world class. You want to throw that around that easily nowadays. What's he done? What's he won? Hmm. Has he world class? Sell me. You sell me on why he's world class. And they couldn't tell me. Or they hmm. said, well, look at his assists. Look at his goals. Well, that's world class, is it? Michu at Swansea in his first season, he was bagging goals for fun. Was he world class? No. Olivier Giroud, look at what he's won. Is he world class? No. You know, I mean, come on. Come on. Shaka was dreadful today. And boys and girls, hang on, sorry, Warren. Boys and girls, right, watching right now. Can someone please tell me why at the end of every game he does that famous limp? Can someone please tell me that? He's always limping off the pitch. Yet during the game, he's fine. But at the end of the game, he always limps. What is that about? Can someone tell me what is that about? So it could be dreadful today. Well, class my ass. Nowhere near. No. It, it, it's like that game the other night against Bayern. We saw Serge Gnabry, right? He was one of our players, by the way. Yeah, yeah. And he couldn't get in the team because of Alexis Sanchez. <laughs> Fair enough, because at the time, Sanchez was just on another planet. But I would rather have him, Serge Gnabry, in our team at the minute than um, Saka. If someone said to me, you can have Serge Gnabry, but you've got to let Saka go, I'd say, yeah, OK, then. Because I think he'd do more damage. I'm not saying that Gnabry's world class. I'm not. But I think he would be more effective. And look what he did. Like, he was terrorising us in that game. You know, and like when is when was the last time that Saka took the game by the scruff of a neck and you know said, Right, okay, I'm dictating this game now. I'm gonna make this team, I'm gonna drag this team over the line. Because when I was a kid, um Diesel and my dad used to take me to Highbury, I used to see it week in, week out with Liam Brady. He played on the left-hand side of midfield. He would take the game by the scruff of the neck, right? And yeah. he would, like, pull Arsenal over the line and dictate the play. The man, that man was world-class, right? The proof of the pudding in that was he went to play in Italy, which was, like, the equivalent of the Premier League now. It was the best league in the world by a country yeah. mile, right? And he... He was outperforming players like Michel Platini and stuff like that, right? So it's I just don't don't see it because I've seen what I consider to be world class players playing for this team, and he's not at that level. He's not dictating the play. He's not controlling games. He's not running games. I mean, look, remember Cesc Fabregas. He was 17. He was running games Class. by himself. Class. It, it's got, when is he actually... When was the last time he did it? You see, you see like, the thing with Saka, right? So listen, by the way, in fact, Arsenal fan 13, thank you very much for that super chat. Uh, much appreciated. Um, big up yourself. Thank you very much. Um, well, listen, I totally agree with you. Liam Brady was obviously a bit before my time, but uh, having spoken to my dad and granddad and, uh, you know, a few of the seniors, um, everyone has sort of said to me, Liam Brady was possibly the best midfielder they've ever seen at this club. Mm. Um, he was, you know, what a wonder of a left foot. He, you know, went Italy and smashed it over there. Um, he was absolute class, you know, very similar in a way to like, like a Glenn Hoddle in terms of, you know, could find you on a sixpence and, yeah, you know, you know, do you know what I mean? Like, what you say about these players, that they were so before their time, if that makes sense. You know, like, they could play in this game today and and, and dominate. You know, they were that good, right? Yeah. Now, you, when you look at, obviously, you know, me growing up, and obviously, yeah, you know, the Thierry Henrys, the Ian Wrights, you know, the Bergkamps, you know, uh, Petit, Vieira, Pires, Pires, Lundberg, you know, when, when you're talking world class, those are the players that come to mind. Those are the players, you know, to do it on a consistent level. World class to me is someone who can walk into any top team in world football and improve it, mm. right? Saka ain't there, right? And what frustrates me about Saka, you boys and girls in the chat, let me know if you agree. 
He's so predictable, Warren. Don't get me wrong. I think he's a good player, yeah? Saka, for me, is a moments player. I don't see him dominate games, right? He can, yeah. he can ghost, the, he'll, he'll ghost the game and he'll get a chance and he'll bag it, right? Um, in the way football is today and the way the average fan is today, if you do nothing for 90 minutes, but you get a chance and you score an half-decent goal, all they, all they talk about is the goal. They don't talk about the other 89, 90 minutes where you did nothing, right? That's that's the that's where we're at now. You know, we're in that world now, right? He's a stat pad. You know, he, his stats look okay. He doesn't run games. This was always my, my sort of issue with Frank Lampard. I love the goals he scored. But when people ask me, oh, Gerard or Lampard, I'm taking Gerard all, all day long. Gerard could dominate games. Gerard could put the team on his back and win the game on his own. I've never seen Lampard do that. Mm. Right, and Saka is very similar. Saka doesn't go past the man. That's another thing that winds me up. As soon as he gets the ball, he'll take it to a certain point and come back, or he'll cut in. Take your man on. Mm. He doesn't take a man on Warren. He doesn't. He doesn't get chalk in his boots. He doesn't take it to the byline. He doesn't. Mm. You know what he's going to do? He comes in. Yeah. You know, and all this. Oh, he's every time it's a bad game. Oh, he's tired. He's tired. He's you know, he's being overplayed, all this rubbish. We're talking about an athlete here, Warren. An athlete. Right? You know, I'm sorry. No. You know, he's, Kai Havertz has a bad game. Everyone's on his back. Saka has a bad game. Ah, oh, it's all right, Bukayo. It's all right. Don't worry about it. No. No, I have the same energy for all of them. Mm. All of them. Because so, you're right. I, d I can't remember him going on a mazy run. Like going around like two or three players. Because for me, if you're playing out on the wing, that's what you need to be doing. You need to be going around two or three players and then crossing yeah. the ball into the box. Look at look at um, Eden Hazard, yeah, right, when he was yeah. at Chelsea. See, like that, that, that type, right? Hazard was winning games on his own. Like the, the, the trickery, the, it, Hazard could beat three or four men. Easy. Easy. I look at Saka. <laughs> And are we overhyping this guy? Like the, Randy Viper says it all the time, and I think I do think he's got a point. We do overhype him, and I think a lot of that is because he's one of our own. He comes from Hailend, you know, and there is always that bit that attachment to a player who's come through the ranks. I totally understand that. I get that. I get it. Right? No, I do. But world class yeah. for me, Warren. These are the games where you got to stand up, stand yeah. up, and win the game. Take the game by the scruff of the neck and win it. Saka did nothing today. In fact, mm. he's had a poor season. I know his stats look okay. He's had a poor season. Odegaard. And I do like Odegaard. I've, I've, I've said it on here all the time. But these are the games where, these are the games where I'm like, Martin, you've got to show us something here. You know, everyone else is giving us a 5 out of 10. You're the captain. You know, pull something out the bag. Look at Man, Man City, Warren, against uh, Real Madrid right last week. Yeah, Foden pulled something out the bag and he's been doing that all season. Yeah, mm. when your team needs you, you need to step up. That's world class. Mm. That's world class. Mm. Where were these like Declan Rice? Declan Rice was dreadful today. Dreadful yeah, yeah. today. He was dreadful against Bayern Munich. He was dreadful today. Yeah, mm. what is going on? And I love Declan Rice, you know, I do. Yeah, but mm. don't think he's exempt. If he has a bad game, I'll call it out. I've got no affinity to any of this slot, Warren. None. Exactly, because you know, these, when you were going on about Saka just now, I was thinking about Rocky Rowcastle, right, and how much I used to love watching him play. Not because exactly. the thing I liked about him was not only was he very skillful, he would get stuck in. If someone tried to kick him, he'd kick him back. Yeah. Like, he was strong as an ox, right? And it was really sad what happened to him with his injuries and all the rest of it. And God rest his soul, you know. But he was he was twice the player that Saka is. I'm sorry, he, he wasn't. People comparing... I saw people comparing Saka to... Um, God, who was it? They were comparing him to. Oh God, I can't remember, but it don't matter. But like, 
Mark, David Rowcastle would take players on and beat them. What I see a lot with Saka, him doing, is he'll go a certain way and then rather than try and play, take a player on, he just pass the ball inside. Right, he won't yeah. try and beat a player. He'll pass the no, ball, he don't, he don't. rub forward, and then try and get the return pass. Well, you, don't. you know that, what I mean? That... And I'm just thinking, well, you know, you if you went on an amazing run, you could take two or three players out of the game. You know, and I, mate, I'm I'm not convinced about it. And Martin Odegaard, mate, I can't stand the fella. I think he's enough. He's like Arteta. It reminds me of Arteta, right? He's in the team because of his look, because he looks good in the merch. I just don't think he's all that. Like, I looked the other day at his stats. He's halfway down the assist total, the numbers of assists. He's halfway down the table for that. He's halfway down the table for goals scored. He ain't that effective. You know, you look at Phil Foden and what he's doing. And like, I have to, I remember a few years ago, I was banging on about the coaching at the football club, saying it's the, co the coaching not being coached properly. So how many of these players have actually improved since Arteta's been here? Do you know what, yeah? By the way, boys and girls, that Khalid, I've I've, I've banned him. Yeah, I I, I I I I haven't got the tolerance tonight. Um, any other night, I can I can take it and, and just banter it off. Um, but I generally think there's someone who probably knows me. I I, I personally think that's probably Terry. Um, yeah, I mean, and I, I I just haven't got like you know come out of hiding and show your face on it. Yeah, uh, if not, then yeah, just leave me alone, man. Seriously. Um, because it's, uh, it's fans, and even if he is genuine, it's just fans like that. I just can't stand. I just can't stand. You know, I blame I blame that lot, Warren. Yeah, for the st for, for the state of it, I, I, and, and for the mentality problem, and the and the lack of standards and all this. Yeah, it, Arteta could lose every game from now to the end of the season. Their next what six seven games, he could lose every one, and they'll still be up his ass. Like um, I, it, 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 you know, it just it, it shocks me. It shocks me. It really does. Yeah, Bertrand says it here. Look, the team doesn't have the mentality. How many times have I said this over the over, since I've been streaming? Even on Claude and the Band says I said, "Listen, I am no different on here than what I was on that channel." The team doesn't have the mentality. We showed that three seasons in a row. It, yeah, facts, <laughs> facts, and yet we never learn. Yeah, we all get hyped up because we've we've won eight, nine, ten games in a row. Right, that's why we get hyped. But now we're at the business end, and the pressure is severely on. Liverpool are out of it. You know, let's have that right. They're out of it now. It's now a straight shooter yet again between us and Man City. And look, look. The, the thing is, as well, let's not forget we're now in a spell where this is now a record amount of time between title wins. It's going to be 20 years now since we won a league title. Do you know what I mean? And I'm just sitting there thinking... This is not acceptable. It's just like, you know, you look back at all the great managers we've had. We had Bertie Mee, we've had George Graham, we've had Herbert Chapman, you know, George Allison, all these people, great, great managers. And I'm, I'm, I'm sitting there and I'm thinking, well, I wonder what they think about it. Like, I mean, so I know some of these fellas I've just mentioned, they're dead. But if they were alive, what they would be saying about the way this club is carrying on. It's just like, uh, honestly, mate, and the fans as well. Um, mate, they irritate me. I, honestly, I can't bear being around them because they irritate me. I just sometimes feel like getting hold of them and shaking them. And that's yeah. me being polite about it. Do you know what I mean? Because they just like, you know, I'm like, the, that comment you made earlier about how they could Arteta could lose the next seven games in a row and they'd still give him a pass. And I believe her, that's right. I think that's what would happen. And I, I bet you before the end of the... If he... They say that happened, right? And he lost every game between now and the end of the season. And we got knocked out of the Champions League on, I was it, Wednesday, I think. I bet you he'd get a new contract. 
Yeah, of course he will. Big up, why not? Come on. Yeah, of you course. Know. Yeah. Yeah, big up Danny as well, mate. I hope you're well, Dan. It's been a while, mate. Uh, days and Warren, uh, great to see you again. Everything you say, I 100% agree. Year in, year out, same old thing. One one trophy out of 16 so far from Mikel. I can't see that changing anytime soon. And you know what? See, when you, when you, see, Warren, right? When you, when you say it like that, one trophy out of 16, it does make me wonder, like, why the, this love fest. Yeah, and this is what I'm, this is where everyone's like, it's just everyone's tapped or twanged, yeah. Now, because I'm seeing a few people in the chat asking, oh, well, who would you want then? Who would you want then? Like, I've, I've listen, guys, you need to watch me, right? Every time I stream, I've, I've, I've always said I want my dream manager is Diego Simeone. He's my dream manager. Mm. Yeah, I will take Inzaghi. If, um, is it Inter? I think he's at. Yeah. Long um, I, I mean, Ancelotti all day long. Like, I, you know, I want a winner. I want, yeah. I want elite. You know, these are elite managers. You know, and again, you'll you'll get yeah, but style of football and this, uh, yeah, but it's 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 no. I'm I'm interested in trophies. I'm, I don't care. I'm not like these typical Arsenal fans who just want to be entertained. I, I, if if I would take, I will watch. I will grind out a one nil. Dirty Arsenal, boring win. I'll take that all season, right? If it, if it gets us the title, I'm not Warren. Honestly, this fascination with because I'm hearing this of a lot of Spurs fans and Man United fans as well. And there's no coincidence why Man United have dropped so much, right? They're like us, very similar to us now in terms of their fan base. We just want to watch good football. We're at a stage now, whether we win or not, we just want to watch good football. Spurs, I mean, the biggest losers going, I don't care about winning. I just want to watch good football. You know, whenever mm -hmm. I hear a fan of any club say that, I just think you, you, you're a loser. I've said it on here, Warren. I feel sorry for your kids. Because if that is your attitude, you just want to be entertained. You couldn't care less about winning trophies or medals or whatever. You just want to be entertained. You want to go to the theatre. That's all it is. Mm. And you're passing that, that attitude down to your kids, <coughs> which means they're going to be losers and their kids are going to be losers and their kids are going to be losers. And people can say, oh, oh Dave, that's a bit harsh. Well, no, it's facts, isn't it? It's facts. Mm. You know, it's an absolute joke. You know, is. this is, is what I'm saying. But, you know, he's not the... Uh, it's, you know, as, as Danny says here, yeah, look, it's, it's rinse and repeat. It, you know, we don't learn from what happened last season and the season before that and the season before that. We don't learn. LED, come on, Diesel. 80% 80 of the world is delusional and brainwashed, not just these Arsenal fans. Yeah, true. Well, I mean, I mean, like, you know, and I think that's what it is. I do. I do think that's what it is, mate. I think there has been a... For the last couple of years, certainly since Arteta's been here, this club has been trying to brainwash its supporters into accepting it. I do. I honestly believe that, right? With all this PR, constant, constant PR, the ex-players that come out backing this nonsense, the media companies backing the nonsense, Talking absolute rubbish, like talk sport as well. They're one of the biggest ones, the biggest, like, people who do it, right? Martin Keown and oh, Ray idiot. Parler. He's, he's and... an idiot. Ma do you know what? It's so sad, right? I, and I, I generally do mean this, right? It, it upsets me sometimes when I'm watching these ex-players who I adored as, when they were players. <laughs> Absolutely adored. I, I used to love Martin Keown as a player. I just thought, you know what? If I'm ever going into war and I had the, and I had the chance to have him on my side, I'm taking him all day long. Mm -hmm. You know, absolute warrior. You know, it wasn't the best centre half ever in world football, but I'll tell you something: the man had heart. He had a, he, he was brave, and he put his head in, and he he would defend to the death. I used to love Martin Keown. However, you watch him now on Talksport. There is no, it's no surprise when you see Simon Jordan and Jim 
ganging up on him all the time, like just bullying him because Martin Keown's an absolute idiot. He's an idiot and everyone knows it. He's an absolute, absolute idiot, right? And um, Ray Parler is another one. Ray, you know, Ray just, Ray's, Ray's, Ray's on banner, isn't he? Like, that's all it is. Like, you know, they, you know, they do the tours, the stadium tours and all that sort of stuff. And, I just you know, think he's yeah. had too much sauce. No, it's, it, mate, it's you know honestly, I mean? it's, it's, he's been it's on that too much. Do you know, and like, yeah, they, him and Adam Brazil. Adam Brazil is another one. How, the, how Adam Brazil is still on Talksport? I just don't know. I think he's absolutely useless. He's, do you know what, Warren? Yeah, I watch it for the banter, right? Yeah, because Jamie O'Hara, like, he's he, he's such a wind up, and yeah, all these fans they all fall for it, and that's why they ring in, right? The only one I watch, yeah, and I actually rate is ESPN, right? Um. Oh, something's happened there. We've lost Warren. I don't know if you can still hear me, but um, yeah, people, yeah. I watch ESPN. I rate that. I rate that. Yeah. Um, Craig Burley. I love Craig Burley. I, I, I agree with 95% of what he says. I think Craig Burley's bang on. Um, Stevie Nichols, another one. I think Steve's all right. Kieran Gibbs is useless. Why he's on now, I'll never know. Yeah, you, you can tell the other guys don't rate him. Yeah, it's obvious. Yeah. I like Ali, the um that is his name, isn't it? Ali, yeah, the South American guy. I think he, he talks a lot of sense. The one I can't stand is that Yan Edge for your toft. Yeah, I think he's useless. He winds me up. I just want to slap him. Um right, where's this gone? He'll be back in a minute, guys. TK, this is I totally agree with this, by the way. Saka couldn't lace Foden's boots. Maybe learn from him, then maybe. You know, this this thing that I keep hearing about all the time, this comparison, who do you think's better, Diesel, Saka or Foden? And every time I say Foden, a lot of these Arsenal fans, right, you know, they, they get their then um they get their knickers in a twist and you know, look at me like I'm some sort of like disloyal rat. Yeah. People just don't like hearing the truth. And you know, I'm sorry, you know, you know what I'm about, you know what I'm on, yeah. I'm on the truth and I'm on about speaking facts. If you don't like it, take your ass, pick yourself up and go over there and go and watch EastEnders over there. Well, you know, the Muppet Show, yeah? Go and watch that, yeah? You know the one with the paid actors? That one, yeah, you know which one I'm on about. Go over there and watch that because you're not going to get that here. Foden is levels, levels above Saka. Levels, yeah? Don't want to hear nothing else. No different. Fact, right? Fact. <laughs> <clears throat> Excuse me. Not one world class player in this squad. I keep saying it. How do you guys? I mean, honestly, educate me here, right? You guys in the chat, just explain something to me. How do you how do you spend 700 million pounds? 700 million. I'm not on about 7 million or 70 million. I'm on about 700 million pounds. And you've not got one. One world-class player in that whole entire squad. Not one. Champions League, we're now in it. World-class players will come to us, right? We can attract them now because we're in the Champions League. Where are those world-class players? Because that's what I was told. But now, have we conveniently forgot that now? Yeah? Where are they? We've got the money. No one can say we don't spend. Same place I've been for the last couple of minutes. Thank you, Sorry, man. That's all right. That's all right. Your wife, find it. No, it wasn't actually this time. It was a dodgy, um, dodgy connection on my, um, on my, um, uh, electricity thing. So, anyway, but I'm back. Yeah, he's back. He's like, what was like a boomerang? He always comes back. Yeah. Um, Zoe, facts, there's all the term world class is thrown around far too easily. Yeah, and that is true. It is. It's true. It's sad. Um, we've got Ronnie in the chat. Big up yourself, mate. Good evening. Hope you're well. Saka is the new Walcott as potential, but not world class. I'm listening, guys. I'm not saying Saka's rubbish. I, I, I do like him. I'm not going to lie. He's a good player. Right? But I just, I just think... You know, if you say, if, if I say a player's not world class, people automatically assume that, that that's me trashing him. And it's not. 
but you have to earn that 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 tag. He hasn't earned it. Mm. And I'm sick and tired of giving out that tag to people who haven't earned it. Yeah, it's okay. I, I'm, and I'm like that with anything. I'm like that with trust or loyalty or anything. I don't just give it out willy-nilly. That's that shit's got to be earned. Exactly. It's like anything, it's got to be earned. I'm sorry. See, for me, when I look back down the years of players that I've seen, right? People like Diego Maradona, right? Michelle Platini, Marco Van Basten, right? These are players for me that are world class, right? And you know, for me, there's very few now that deserve that. I mean, Kevin De Bruyne probably, um, but you know, Liam Brady was in that class. You know, they, there's very few that are world world class players nowadays. They're they're yeah. not. You know, I, I I'm struggling to think of it, and you know, you look at. I think the standard of football in this country is falling, Diesel. Like, you look at, like, our teams in Europe, okay? Like, all of them are are struggling to get through to the semi-finals, right? We're drawing 2-2 with Bayern. Man City are drawing 3-3 with Real Madrid. Liverpool are 3-0 down against Atalanta. West Ham are 2-0 down. I think the only ones that have got a lead so far after the first leg is Villa. Villa, yes, Villa. Yeah, but Warren, how many times right, have I said that though? Like, like you've heard me say that on this stream. Like the standard of this league has dropped dramatically in the last several years. Wait, yes. Look, right, you look at you know Man City by their standards, they've had a poor. They've been poor this season, right? They've sold so many like good players in the summer, and yet they're up there and they're odds on to win the league. Liverpool take away this week right we're more or less odds on favorites to win it and look at their look at their team they're playing kids right you know like you know they're playing kids you know that liverpool team is nowhere near as good as what it was three, you know, about 3 years ago right nowhere near and yet yet they were in with a shot of winning the league you know it's it's it, the, the, the and, the, and and again if i ask you you know <laughs> Name me, name me. You know, you know, everyone says this, this is the best league in the world. I don't think it is, but that's what everyone says, right? The Premier League is the best league in the world, in world football. Okay, well, in that case, if that is the case, then Warren, reel off all these world-class players in this league. Yeah. You'll probably name two or three, and then you'll struggle. Now what? 25? 20, how, many, how many in the squad? 25? Is that right? Yeah. Diesel as well. When was the last time a team from this league won the Champions League? Well, Man City did last season, but apart from that, so, yeah. <laughs> apart from that, when was the last time? Yeah, and we, had, you know, because yeah, you look yeah. at the records, the most successful countries' league is the Spanish league. They've had the yeah. most trophy wins in European competition. But that's what I'm saying, Warren. Right? When you look at what is it, 25 players to a to a to a squad, yeah. Mm. Right. And how many teams are there in the Premier League? And uh, so, just say I'm I'm asking you to name me world class players. You could probably name two or three. I can't think of many. Probably two or three, and the rest you'd be struggling. Now you think of all them players in this league. There's a lot. And yet we can probably name on one hand, one hand, the world-class players in this league. That, and um, when people, and people need to look at it like that, need to analyse it like that. It's like uh, with um, Michelle. Yeah. One trophy out of 16. One. And even that was with Unai's team. Mm. You know? Because you can't have it both ways, a lot of these Arsenal fans. You can't say, oh, that's out of order. That, you can't say that were his team. That was his team. Well, hang on a minute. Every time Arsenal lost the game, everyone said to me, yeah, well, we need his players. Once he's got his players, then we can judge him. You can't have it both ways, Warren. You know what I mean? So, I you know, remember that. I remember yeah, Terry. Remember. Terry used to say that to you all the bloody time. Yeah, of course he did. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. That's why I tried to find a therapist to help him and I couldn't. Right? You remember that? Yeah, I do. Yeah. I actually had a therapist, right? 
who I managed to blag and said, look, like, like money is of no object, right? Just watch the stream tonight and make your own judgment. She watched about 20 minutes and said, no, I can't help him. Oh, I swear to you, I can't help him. That's what she said. No, me. I remember Keep it. Your money. Keep your money. I can't help him. See, the um, thing is, I remember that game against Villarreal when we got beat in that semi-final and he was really upset and he, he turned. He said, I'll tear her out, didn't he? Yeah. And then the next day when he did a stream, he turned back again. <laughs> so that's what I'm saying, mate. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. And do you know what, right? There was a time where he he, he, he kind of turned Claude. Because I was, I tell you, I was, I was watching the stream um, last week, an old one of ours. And I, I had a bit of a row with Claude. Because I was like, no, no, Claude. Because no. Claude said something. Like, and I thought, no, no, Claude. Like, don't let him get in your head. Yeah, he's trying to, he's trying to, he's trying to turn you. No, don't, don't fall for it. Do not fall for it. Yeah, stick to your beliefs, right? Because you're listening to him too much. Yeah, no, because Claude was always like agreeing with me. Yeah, standards and mentality and all that. But when, because Terry's always at you, it's like sometimes with a lot of people, you know, you start to believe it. It's like, no, 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 don't get twanged. Don't get twanged by him. Uh, Darren Sullivan, uh, Daz Lar, pick up yourself, mate. Much appreciated as well for the super chat. He does pay the bills, Dow, as you know. Uh, we must hand out Arteta, surely now. We have now thrown another season away. Great stream, Diesel and Warren. I'd, I'd put Saka at left back. <laughs> I t oh, mate, I'll tell you something. I, 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 Warren, do you know what it is, right? I still can't. I still can't. Believe he, he 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 threw it away. I just can't, for the life of me, I just cannot understand why he went with that lineup. I just can't. It's like, are you trying? Are you trying to throw this away? Do you know what I mean all these like this? Even like when he was doing Partey at right back at the start of the season, <clears throat> them little things. I'm like, what are you? Explain to me your thought process because I just I don't understand it. Mm. I just, I don't get it. I really don't. And I don't understand. It's like, do you know, like, when you've done yes, something was... really crazy at work, right? Really bloody off key. And you get called in by the manager. And the manager sits you down and they say to you, Warren, what were you thinking? Why did you do that? Do you know what I mean? See, that is the problem. I do not think that is happening at this football club. No one, to, to, no one tomorrow will be calling him into the office, sitting him down and saying, Mikel, what happened? Why did you why did you do that? Why did you pick that starting eleven? Because I can guarantee you that if David Dean was still at that club. He would be saying that to him. He'd be having that conversation. Or if David O'Leary was in the role that um, Edu's in, he would be calling him in, saying, look, what's going on? What are you doing? Why did you pick that starting eleven? What's this all about? Do you know what I mean? Because like that in the real world, that would what be would happen. Because if you did something really mental, Really, really badly off key. You'd get pulled about it, wouldn't you? Yeah, but do you know what? Yeah, but Arsenal were very different to any other top club, mate. Like that, don't like you. You know, there, there's no pressure here. You know what it is, Warren? Right? I always, um, I, I don't, I don't so much listen to a lot of these ex-Arsenal players, like the Parlers, the Keans, or whatever. Yeah, but I will listen to Thierry Henry. Uh, you know, I will listen to Emmanuel Petit. I will listen to Tony Adams. I, I will, you know, and when I mean, Thierry got it bang on for me, right? This is why he was working for us for free as a coach. Do you remember? In, in, was it the reserves or the kids? He was teaching the kids. He was working for free. He said something about, yeah, he was commentating on a game and he said something, you know, not derogatory, but, you know, he was giving his honest opinion and asked and let him go. I remember that. Yeah, because but, well, it, it was something to do as well. Yeah, but he was a winner. He was working at Sky, and That's Arsenal it. wanted him not to work at Sky. He just wanted him to work at Arsenal. 
and yeah, right. Cherry was like, "No nah, bollocks, I will do what I want." Yeah. Right, and, uh, and and you know that's his right. Sky pays me, you don't, right? <laughs> and, you know it's true, isn't it? Yeah, and this is the thing, and it's like. When I'm seeing Arsenal, but when Thierry Henry, right, is like critical, I did a stream on it like ages ago when he said something a bit critical about Arsenal, about a player in particular. I can't remember who it was. And yet, all, all I saw was all these Arsenal fans attacking Thierry. And I'm like, this is Thierry, this is the king. What are you doing? There is not one player in this squad today that I would protect or back over Thierry Henry. Are you mad? Thierry Henry is possibly what the best foreign import the Premier League's ever seen, right? And this is what I'm saying, Warren. We know when we're talking about world class players, hence like the uh, you know on my thumb now. Well, where were they today? These supposed world class players, because all I get told is Odegaard is the next Burkamp. Yeah, Saka is you know Saka's a rich man's Pires or whatever. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? You, you know, Gabriel Jesus, for me, and it, look, he's another one. Gabriel Jesus and uh, Zinchenko should never play for this club again. I'm sick and tired yeah. of Jesus. I'm I, I'm sorry. All right, and, and again, it's another Lacazette thing, isn't it? It's another, oh, yeah, but he works hard. Yeah, he don't score a lot, but he works hard. I'll take Lacazette over Jesus in a heartbeat. Yeah, no, me if too. I had to pick one, I'd take Lacazette because I'll tell you All what. All I Jesus. saw today was Jesus just moaning, Jesus. throwing himself to the ground and complaining and whinging and yeah. whining. Yeah. You know, yeah. So, yeah. yeah, he's, mate, I, I, Warren, he's useless. And do you know what? Yeah. This today. Let me just get this out, and I want your opinion on this as well, Ryan, right? You know, before we wrap up, yeah. Today was a perfect example of just why we need a top striker. And, and look, you know, for all the goals we've scored this season, and obviously it's taken everyone, a lot of these Arsenal fans, you know, they're, they're now of the of the of the feeling, of, you know, that oh, actually, we're banging all, we're, you know, we're bagging all these goals. Maybe we don't need one. No, we do. We, we do because you Kai Havertz in then goals against teams right down the bottom of the table. Like we scored, what was it, six at Sheffield United? We scored six against West Ham, and they were in a dreadful run of form. Do you know what I mean? So I'm sorry, no, we do need a top striker. Yeah, no, mate, that's what I'm saying. We do work well, I mean, I'll tell you something, right? Kai Havertz had about three or four guilted chances today. Yeah. That the, the, the one the, the, I've watched it about five five, six times on playback, and every time I watch it, it, it really grates on me, right? That pass from uh, Zinchenko, it was on the 15th minute of the game. Yeah. Uh, ball over the top. And Kai Havertz right he runs onto it and he's got all the time in the world. Take the shot, and he, he he thinks he's got all the time in the world, and he just I don't know if you can remember it allowed the defender to get back, and and I'm looking at it, I'm thinking, shoot, <laughs> like what do you think? What he's not gonna he's just gonna allow you to have twenty minutes to to get? Oh, do you know what? It just honestly, it just it just that it's it's a small margins, mate. Like when you're going for a title. The chances that come your way, you have to bag and warrant. Havertz, Jesus, Jesus has got he's got worse. He's Mate. got what four goals this season, if that. I know. Right? I don't he's know what this guy does. Would you? Would you? If you if we had the opportunity to sign him, would you sign Ollie Watkins? No. 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 I don't. I, do you know what it is, mate? Right. There's something about him that I just don't think he's he's okay. His goal today was class. Yeah. I'm still not sold on Watkins 100. percent I'd rather have Tony. Yeah, that's true. Uh, I'd rather have Tony. Is, I just Tony, I, yeah. I don't think Arteta would be able to hand, handle Tony because he's and got he, he, he's his own man, and he ain't gonna be pushed yeah. around. 
Yeah, there's just something about Watkins. He's had a good season, and I think I'm sure he's a boyhood Arsenal fan. So, it, you know, you know, if he come here, he'd probably, you know, he'd play for the club if you like. But there's just something about him. I just think I, I, he's he's good, but he's not top. Mm. He's okay, you know. He's he's you know he's he's half decent. But there's just something he's not got. I like ruthless, arrogant strikers, man. Tony, Tony just strikes me as like he's like he's more of a maverick. I just I, just, I like Tony, and that, I just like Tony. that is why I don't think Arteta will sign him because I just don't yeah. think Arteta can ha- would be able to handle him. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Because. Ivan Tony strikes me as being the sort of player who is his own man and he isn't going to be pushed around by this manager. And when he, this manager starts coming out with all this transmitting and all this other nonsense that he talks about, he's, Tony's going to sit there the same as what Kieran Tierney did, the same as what Pepe did, and all these other players that he's fallen out with and thought, what are you talking about? You're talking nonsense. Do you know what I mean? Because it it just doesn't make any sense. Some of the things that this manager has done are just completely, they're just completely illogical. They just make no sense. Yeah. You know, it just doesn't, it doesn't, I just don't understand it. Why he allowed Emmy Martinez to walk out of this club? Right, and he choose, chooses Leno over him and then proceeds to spend £70 million, pound, maybe more, trying to buy a goalkeeper and get a goalkeeper that is of the same class as what he was. I just don't get it. I just don't understand the logic in doing that. And the guy's proven himself since he's left here. He's won a World Cup. And look at the performance he put in today. He was outstanding. No, yeah, but he's 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 been up there, mate. He's he's better than anything we've got. Yeah. Um, so I, why we had him and he was willing to stay. Yeah, he I'll loves take, Arsenal. I'll take him back in a heartbeat. And do you know what? Towards the end of the season, right when he obviously when Bert Leno got that injury, we was playing him every you know in every single game. In my eyes, he more than earned. Um, his, you know, his place. Look, I mean, we're old school, Warren. I've always said, you know, if, if you play well, you keep the shirt. Yeah. You know, like, Burnt Leno come back and it was like, yeah, thanks, Emmy, but now Burnt's back in the team. No, <laughs> Burnt, Burnt has to earn, earn his spot back. The He's got to earn is, it. When he came into the team, right, it wasn't like <clears throat> it was a drop-off. He actually improved the defence because he was organising it. But Leno was too quiet. You could hear him screaming at players. You go here, you go there, you do this. He was vocal. Do you know what I mean? And we were crying out for it. And our defence improved while he, when he was playing. It was diesel. It was just like, I just do not understand the logic in it. No, I that's what I'm saying, but you know, we say this, but then yeah, no one else, you know what I mean? Sort of like you know, calls him out on it, mate, because he's he's uh, so well protected, and everyone thinks he, he is the second coming of Pep. And this is what I'm saying. Like today, you know, that comment from Marlon earlier on, yeah, like you know, we lost today. It's not so much the, the it's not so much the result that could have been that could have been avoided to, avoided today. Today is on is. 100% on, on Michelle. The lineup, the substitutes during the game, right? What was said at half time. We are going for a title, Marlon. Yeah? That's what I say to you. We are going for a title. And everyone said to me after last season when we bottled it, don't worry because next year they'll be stronger as, as a result. They'll be stronger. They'll be, you know, you, you have to feel pain in order to, you know, to, to win and all this rubbish, right? Yeah, all that, all that, all that quotes of the day crap. Yeah, you know, like they'll be stronger for it next season. You know, they would have learned the lesson. You know, they will right the wrongs. All this crap. They're growing together as a team, Warren. Yeah, all that nonsense that we heard last season. Mm-hmm. And look, they go out there today. 
right, knowing Man City beat Luton the day before, and also just off the back of Liverpool losing. It was so like the incentive is there. You know, the, the the carrot was dangled, and all we had to do was turn up today, and we didn't. We See, didn't. Even in the second half, the second half was possibly the worst half I've seen of Arsenal this season. It was that bad. Mm. And people want to tell me, oh, chill out, days, relax. No. No. Mm. But that game against Bayern Munich last season, uh, last season, last week, rattled us. Rattled us. You couldn't you couldn't score a goal against Arsenal, let alone beat them. Yet we, we draw to, you know, Bayern Munich. And all of a sudden, Warren, now there's pressure on us. You know, and now, once again, we wilt. It's not like we lost 2-0 today, but we worked bloody hard and we were very close. No, they was all over us. You would have thought Aston Villa were going for the title today, not us. Ah, come on, all, all these excuses. No, listen, the, what Rubbish. worries me about what's happened today as well is if we go and looks like as likely we we don't win the league and we don't win a trophy, there's going to be players in that team who are going to be asking for a move. Like the top players in that team will be asking to like for a transfer because they're going to sit there and they're going to think, is this man actually ever going to win a um, lead us to a trophy? Yeah. You know, it's like of Saliba, Gabriel, you know, you see, you see, uh, this is what you see. Like when I when I when I read these comments from that Khalid, uh, I mean, like Marlon Benny, right? Whether he agrees with me or not, Marlon's here every every single time I stream. I can't even knock him. Yeah, like fair play. But even he, he, even his comment, it's like, do these Arsenal fans not realise that we have got some gems in this team? We do. They're not world class, but they are. Saliba isn't world class, but he ain't far. He ain't, he's not far off. Mm. Like if he, you know, you know, and as long as we have a manager like this, and as long as we, yeah, it's always a case of close but no cigar, Warren. That's what it is. Yeah, we're close, but we never, you know, always the bridesmaid, never the bride, right? That's what Arsenal are. Yeah. Eventually, these fans need to realise if we carry on like that, the big sharks are going to circle our, our gems. And it's not a, it's not going to be a hard sell, is it? Because it's a case of look, you can either stay at Arsenal and compete, but never win them, or you can come to us because here, I guarantee you, we win something every single season, yeah. and you'll get more money. Because the thing is, Arsenal will sell these players to yeah, like, they will. rivals. They will because they've done it before in the past, you know. It's happened as long as I've been supporting this club. It's happened. Frank Stapleton went to Manchester United, right? We had Liam Brady going overseas to Italy to Juventus. You know, it. Any time we've had a real top top player, you know, they if we're not delivering and they're not happy, they they get sold. Cesc Fabregas goes to Barcelona. They just come in and they pick them off. Patrick Vieira is another one. You know. Oh, Vieira. Yeah. Uh, Thierry Henry went to Barca because we weren't winning. You know, it, it's a long, long track record of our top players being sold. And Robert Van Persie going to United and as well. That's another one. It's, yeah, but... Robin Van Persie, that, that was the one where you look at and you think, do you know what? He's, he goes to Man United and his, his first season, he wins the league. First season. Look at Ashley Cole. Yes. Look, look, at, look at what one. he won at Chelsea. No one, no Arsenal fan, as much as it hurts, no Arsenal fan can turn around to Ashley and say, you messed up. Yeah. You, you, you can't. He's vindicated. Look at what he's won. Robin Van Persie is vindicated. Look at what look at what he's won. Even yeah. Robin like Van Persie said, come out and said, Arsenal weren't serious. I wanted yeah. to win stuff. Arsenal weren't serious. And that isn't just in the last couple of years. This is this has been a this has been a regular thing at Arsenal, Warren. Yeah. yeah? This top four is enough. It's enough yeah. for a lot of debate from me and you and a lot of the guys in the chat. But for the for the that Khalid earlier on. 
you know, Marlon, a few of these guys, they are the majority. We are the minority. Mm. Yeah. And this is what this is what this is what makes me laugh. I'm 42 years of age. I now look in my 30s, guys, but I'm 42, believe it or not. Right. And I'm going on like this. I'm fuming. And yet I've seen us win things. A lot of you guys in the chat who are a lot younger than me haven't seen Arsenal win the, the trophies I've seen. So when you think about it, when you really deep it, you guys should be more angry at the club than I am. Because at mm. least I've seen it. I might not see it again, but at least mm. I can say I've seen it. You mm. guys haven't seen it. You might have seen the old FA Cup, but that's it. You ain't seen nothing else. And yet, so you should be more angry than what I am. This is what I don't understand. I just see, don't get it. This, this thing, I could go back mm. at Arteta again. But I, when I look at him, it makes me really angry because I keep thinking about George and what he did in that season in 89. He went and took us to one of the, well, probably at the time, the best team in the world, right? They hadn't lost at home for something like three years or something crazy like that. And they hadn't lost by more than they hadn't lost by two goals for years and years and years. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. They were winning European Cups. They were winning um, World Club Championships. They were winning. No, they weren't winning World Club Championships, but they were winning European Cups, season in, season out, league titles, season in, season out. Like to go up there. And win by two clear goals was like I'll be asking this current team to go to the Etihad and win by two clear goals. And I it's just and and worse because we were you know we we were really up against it that night at Anfield and um we we went and did it. You know, we won up, went up there. We got the 2 0 win. Oh, I'm sorry. I just cannot see Mikel Arteta pulling off something like that. I just can't. I just cannot see. No, you know, you're having a laugh. And I'll, I'll tell you something else, Warren. Yeah, I want to bring this up. Yeah, Carl Welsh has put a comment in here. And, all right. And do you know what? I. I was going to mention this tonight. I totally forgot until I read your comment, mate. And, um, He's absolutely bang on because at the end of the game, at the, at the end of the game, Martinelli laughing and joking with Martinez at the end of the game, absolutely disgusting. I'd wrap him, I'd, I'd wrap him around the crossbar after blowing the title when he's he was laughing. That's true. So, because I remember that at, at the end of the game, um, one of the players was uh, talking to Saka, but it looked, Saka looked like he was gutted. So he went, it went like they were laughing and joking, and then the camera then straight away goes to. Martinez and Martinelli, right? And I was watching it, and they were actually like busting joke and having a, uh, you know, they was having a laugh and a joke. And I thought, man, in my head, I'm thinking, hang on a minute, we've just blown the title today, and Martinelli's having a laugh and smiling and catching joke with his ex-teammate. And do you know what, Warren? This is what I'm saying. Yeah, this is where I have to look at Michelle. If I was the manager, and I've seen that. That player ain't playing for me again this season. He's not even making the bench. Mm. Yeah. I'm fuming, which I, I, you know, I would assume Michelle was. But for one of your players to stay on the pitch when the majority of all the other players walked off and Martinelli stayed on the pitch, right, talking to Martinez, as a manager, I'm marching onto that pitch and I'm dragging him off. Right? I'll deal with you down the fucking tunnel. Get in the tunnel now. Yeah, that's what I would have done. That's what the old school managers would have done. Yeah, these modern managers now can't upset him because he, he might go to HR. All that rubbish. No, they were having, Warren, it was clear as day. Right? They was having a laugh and a joke together. Right, after a game like this, that we've of this magnitude, yeah, that we've just lost. And Martinelli's, and I'll tell you something, I like Martinelli, but when I see things like that, do you know how quick I go off a player, right, when I see things like that? Who are you? And this is what I'm saying, Warren. They ain't serious. This is why I've always said they won't win the league. They won't because they're not serious. 
they're not serious, right? They, you know, they're not in the zone. You know what I mean? They're not in the zone. Like, they're not. It's all vibes, man. It's all, as Thierry and we said, everything's all nice at the Arsenal. It's all comfortable at the Arsenal. It's all friendly at the Arsenal. You know, there is no competitiveness. There is no edge. There is no, you know, shithousery. There is nothing. Like, it's all nice at Arsenal. It's nice. If you want to go there for an easy life, it's nice. It's comfortable. You can chill. They, you can relax. They, nah, man. They, and this Rubbish. people, right, is why Diesel and I want Diego Simeone to be our manager because he would, he, he would not have this. He would bring in all that mentality, the shithousery and what have you. You know, and you know, I know you've all heard me going on about standards tonight and stuff, and it is true, it's important. But also, there are times when you have to use a bit of shithousery. And Ferguson was a master of it, as much as I dislike the fella. But also, you know, if you want to win in the modern game, you have to indulge in it. And I, I'm sorry, but I just cannot see this club being capable of doing it. Certainly not the players, anyway. No, no, no. No, I, I, listen, I, I've seen enough, Warren. Like, you know, uh, will there be twists and turns, you know, still to go in these last several games? Yeah, probably. You know, there might be. But we we had it in, we oh, we, had, we had it in our hands and now we haven't. And now, you know, mm. and we've got a tough run in as well. Because as bad as Man United have been, I cannot see Man United let, allowing us to go there and just like bump them off the park. They will be party poopers, as will Spurs. You know, and this is what I'm saying, you know, and everyone's going to want to be Arsenal, especially us. Yeah, because we have the worst fan base, because we've got cocky pricks in our fan base. That's what it is. That's why a lot of, a lot of football fans, right, if you ask them, who are the worst fans, who are the most annoying fans, they all say Arsenal. They all say it, you know that. That's not that's no, that's no. fact. They do, no. right? Because no, I find them annoying, race. Diesel. Yeah, I'm telling I, you. I find <laughs> them annoying because they are. That's why I prefer talking football, right, to non-Arsenal fans. None, yeah. really, because I tend to get a better. I can have a better convo with them. Um, Liam, uh, mate, much appreciate for the super chat. Uh, just to give some context, yeah, I was in Coventry this well last week. Uh, for an exhibition, a conference, it was a work thing, and um, yeah, my man Liam here came up to me, he recognized me as I was going upstairs to get my lunch, yeah, because I'm a beast and I love my grub. And um, yeah, he came up to me, mate, and just said he was a fan of the show, and obviously, he used to watch me, Terence, and Claude. Um, and yeah, he gave me a big hug as well. Big up yourself, Liam, and mate, much appreciated for the uh, uh super chat. I said, did, I, I did say to you last week, mate, put a comment in and I will definitely shout you out. Really nice fella, really nice bloke. Um, these are mate Liam from Wednesday, said about today. Thank you, Liam. I really appreciate that, mate, and hope you're well. I hope you got you got back home safe as well. Um, all good, mate. The assembled Arteta thought he had Raya, but we went somewhere else. He was after Raya for years. Um, ask. Arsenal have enough. To, Arsenal have enough to be a world class team. The problem is the manager isn't world class. We need, we need. Well, we definitely need a striker. We need to sort that left back position out because as as, as well as Kivio's done there, going forward he ain't the answer. We we need a top class left back. Zinchenko. Do you know what, I'll, I'll, guys? I'm more interested to see who's going. I'm more interested to see. Who we sell because Eddie and Ketty has got to go, right? Mm -hmm. Zinchenko's got to go. Gabriel Jesus has got to, he's got to go. Yeah, those are those are the main three. Yeah? Reese Nelson's another one. He's got to go. <laughs> you know, like you know, we've we, when you look at it, I look at Man City. You know, they can challenge on both fronts. Champions League. I'm sure they're still in the FA Cup, right? Yeah, they are. They're yeah. in line to get another treble, Diesel. Yeah, right. But they've got the squad to do it. Well, I look at us and I think, yeah, we can go for one. Can't really go for two, oh. right? And this is what I'm saying. You know, you look at the... I mean, he put Eddie and Ketiam on last night. Why? Um, last night, early on. Why? He's crap. Mm. You know, this is what I'm saying. Live by the sword, die by the sword, Warren. He's not good enough. 
He's not. I'm, I'm telling you now, and I've been saying it, right? He is not good enough, right? He's got us to a level. You know, go back to Marlon's comment earlier on, right? I've praised him on here. Don't get me wrong. He's he's done better than what I thought he would, and he he's got us to a certain level. But that certain level that he's got us to, a lot of you Arsenal fans are happy with that. I'm not. I want to go one better, and going one better is winning the damn thing. He's not the answer. He's got us to this level. Shake his hand. Thank you for your efforts. Really appreciate that. Now he's got to go. And we need someone in who's going to get us over that line. Warren, he's had three stabs. Mm. Three stabs. He's had three chances. Any other top club in, in, in world football, you get one, two, max. Max. Two. This man's had three. And the likelihood is he'll have four next season because he ain't going to go. Right? They're not going to sack him. They swap him. They're not. He's going to be here next season, and he'll be there the season after that. And I'm telling you now, Diesel, we will not win a major trophy all the time he's our manager. It, no, it ain't won't. happening. World class is winning a tournament with your national team and club level. Ben White can't listen. Right? Let me tell you about Ben White. Yeah, um, my opinion on on this England thing. Yeah, because I spoke to a few people, and I don't know. If, so they tell me this is true. I And I'll be honest with you. I reckon Ben White's a batty man, yeah? I do. I reckon he's batty, yeah? And for for guys who don't know what that means, he's 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 gay, right? <coughs> I reckon he's batty. He's a batty man. I reckon all the England players know it. I think everyone in football knows it. And this thing about he had a, he had an argument with uh, Holland, that Steve Holland, I reckon that's true. And I reckon something happened and Steve Holland has blatantly turned around to him and he's called him queer or he's called him a batty man. Or he's called him something, yeah? And Ben White's obviously started crying his eyes out, rang his mum and said, "Get me, book me a flight and get me on the first flight out of here. That's what I reckon's happened. I genuinely believe, yeah, I've got no issue if he's gay or not, you know, but I do honestly believe it's centred around that. I do. I do. Um, Diesel. Something yeah, I've on my computer. I've got a voicemail message from Ben White talking about what happened. Right, I'll send it to you. Have you? Yeah, I've got the audio of the voicemail message. I'll send it to me. Yeah, send it to me. <laughs> I'll send it to your Instagram. Am, mate. I, am I close? Eh? Am I close? Well, yeah, there was a ruck, but in, in, there was no mention about oh, um, no. what you just said. But it would not surprise me. Man. In Barty. Uh, oh, look, look at this. He assembled. Look, Liam Brady has said he left Arsenal because they weren't ambitious. Oh, my God. Shock. How many <laughs> times have we heard this now? Yeah, Bloody exactly. hell. Diesel, that book of his that he wrote recently was absolutely brilliant. And he talks about that. He, yeah, he, you know he, what? I do want to get that, you know. Legend. Come on, Liam. Thank you, mate. Stop, man. I, yeah, next stream, we can have a better game. Liam, do you know what, mate? Even if we do, even if we do have a better game, as far as I'm concerned, mate, to, like, I just, like, this manager, we won't win nothing while this manager's here. You know, and I've said that. I'm not just saying it today or last week. I've been saying it for years since the day he got here. I do not rate him. I don't. I don't. I don't rate him because when it really matters, he doesn't show up. I'm sorry, he doesn't. Right? And he, he, he lost to the better manager today, the manager who we got rid of. Yeah. See, the thing is, Diesel, uh, I always go back to the time when he got appointed. I just do not understand. We had the opportunity to get Ancelotti, right? He was available at the same time as Arteta was, right? Everton appointed Ancelotti. We got Arteta. Why did that happen? It should have been the other way round. Right? Why... Do you know what I mean? The Arsenal Football Club's the third biggest club in this country, and they appointed a guy with no experience. It's just absolute madness. Yeah, it's because he worked under uh, under Pep. That's all it is. He worked under Pep. You know, te you know what? Like, as much as I give Terry stick, right? Young Terence is the only one. Uh, he's the only one in, 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 who I know who wanted him. You know, like these Arsenal fans who are jumping on the bus now. Oh, yeah, I always wanted Mikel. I always wanted him. No, you didn't. Yeah. Terence did. I will, I will say that. I will say that. He was on about Arteta from day one. 
you know, and that, that's why, Warren, you know, you, you used to hear me say all the time, well, but hang on, if he was the number two to Sean Dyche at Burnley, would yeah, you? Have, no, you wouldn't have. It's because he works under Pep. Pep's a manager that you, you apparently don't rate. Oh, he needs money, Diesel. That's the only reason he's successful. Okay, so, so if that's that. the case, why do you want Michelle then? I you know, mean, time, like... and time and time again, you would keep asking Terry to explain why he wanted him, and he would never answer. No, he can't question. answer it. That's what I'm saying. I put it on. I'll, I'll stick it on him, mate. Look, and anyone, like you know, for that matter, if you're gonna say something, hey, sell it to me. Sell it to me. Tell me then. Tell me. You know, and they can't. It's like the process. What is the process then? Tell me. In layman's terms, imagine I'm a nine-year-old boy. Explain it to me like I'm nine. Explain it. And they can't do it, Warren. This is what I'm saying. It's all, it's, it's just rubbish, mate. They, they watch too much of that AFTV over there, right? And that Pratt in the Hat, um, I see, put a comment on Twitter early on about, oh, uh, Man City in their, um, what was it? Their, uh, those charges or whatever. Yeah, yeah. You know, let's see how, how smart they are or how funny they are when they get their charge. And I'm thinking, so what, we lose a game today and you're, you're digging at Man City. What have Man City got to do with us today? Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's you know, it's, it's just, it's people in glass houses, Warren. It just winds me up. You know, ch you know, check your own house first before you start looking at others. You know, that's how, that's how I am. Yeah. You know, who am I to laugh at them or them or them? Well, we ain't won nothing. Who are we? You know, and this is what I'm saying, mate. And uh, nah, it just, it just winds me up. I can't help it. Just pisses me off. Um, Christ, two hours, Warren. Love what? <laughs> see, you're now, mate. You're now just the same as me. Um, see how easy, as easily done, though, it is. I know. You know what I mean? But, uh, right, yeah, guys, look, look, still like 25, 30 people watching. Listen, guys, if you haven't smashed the likes, please smash them. Yeah, they help us more than you'll ever know. <laughs> they really do. Um, so, yeah, please smash the likes, guys. Look, we had to do this uh, stream tonight and obviously put our points across. Um, absolutely disgusting, shambolic performance today. And you know what? This manager, anyhow, we don't win the league, which I don't think we will now. I think it's Man City's. Um, but, yeah, yet again, but this time it's down to Michelle. This is solely down to him now. He's messed it up. He's cocked it up today. But... No one will believe that, will they? Because it's Michelle. He's in his absolute salt. So, um, yeah, there you go. Um, but Warren, tell the people then where they can find you. Right. So you can find me on uh, YouTube. I've got a channel called Warren's Team Talk. I do a show every day where I just throw up the interesting no news stories in sport as I see them. Could be golf, could be rugby, could be cricket, could be football, could be anything to do with sport. So there's that. And then every Saturday, half past two, I do a show where I look at all what's going on in the matches up and down the United Kingdom. I keep you up to date with what the scores are, who scored the goals and all this sort of carry on. It's a bit like Sky Sports Soccer Saturday used to be when they used to have all the ex-players looking at TV screens and stuff like that. So it's just a bit of light-hearted look at the football as it's kicking off on a Saturday afternoon, really. So, yeah, it's good fun and it's uh, just a bit of a laugh and a giggle, really. So if you, have, you like that sort of stuff, come and check it out and get involved with all the fun and whatnot. But listen, Diesel, thank you so much for asking me to come on and have a chat with you tonight. Oh, it's fine, mate. You know that. Uh, I really enjoyed it, mate. And it's been very therapeutic, I have to say. Yeah. And make yeah. sure you put a like on the video as well and subscribe to Diesel's channel and whatnot because this man is an absolute legend. And as far as I'm concerned, he's Arsenal's number one YouTuber. Christ, big praise. Thank you very much. Mind you, state of some of these channels mate and the state of some of the people on them uh, you know you, you how they've got bigger following than i ever it just it's but again you know it, it it just goes to show didn't it just the state of this fan base mate because popularity sort of over overtakes facts didn't it people who talk facts it, you know it's just yeah clowns i mean look and at i just want to say one last thing right hmm. terrence if you are watching this show get in touch with diesel 
and get yourself back on this bloody channel. It you are sorely missed. And, you know, the public want to see it. They want to see you going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Diesel like you always did in the past. It was, honestly, it was pure gold. For those of you who haven't seen it, you, you, you've you missed out because it was pure gold. So please, Terry, come back, speak to Diesel. He, he's not angry. He's not upset. He just wants you to come back and, like, get these streams resurrected because it was brilliant. And like he always says, you two had something special. Yeah. He won't, look, he won't come on. God knows why he won't, but, you know. It is what it is. I'm not going to beg. Um, but, yeah, it's a shame. You know, something good there. And obviously, it's gone to waste. But, you know, at least I could... Well, it's not me. I know that. So, anyway. But, yeah. So, if you are watching, mate, I'm sure you are. Because um, <laughs> I've seen a lot of your comments in the chat tonight. Uh, I know it's you. Uh, but, yeah, look. You know, I'm here, mate. You know where to find me. You got my number. Um, but other than that... Yeah, we go again, Warren, isn't it? We go again. Yeah. And just see what the rest of the season brings. But it was a game we had to win today, mate. We had we just had to and when you're in a title, the one thing you all you must do is at least win your home games. And and uh yeah, and to to think we didn't even score today and we did those chances and the, the lineup. I can't go all over it again, but yeah, it's just it's just you just go from a high to a low in a matter of uh, you know an hour and a half, and it's just it just it just yeah. I'm not even surprised, mate. I just but I just thought you know what? I'm so glad I I stayed true and said nah. I'm not getting hyped. I'm staying cautious. Let's just see what happens and look. There you go. It is what it is. But, um, mm. You know, but yeah, guys, thank you uh, very much for staying with us, mate. Look, two, over two hours. And you guys have uh, stayed with us, and it's a Sunday night, and everyone's got work tomorrow. So, yeah, much appreciated. Thank you very much, and thank you for the guys who sent me in the Super Chats as well. Bills have to be paid, and steak has to be bought. <laughs> so, um, yeah. <laughs> Where's that? Exactly. Right. Get the steaks on, Diesel. So I'm saying. So I'm saying. <laughs> Love you guys, and yeah, I'll speak to you soon. Later. I'll tear her out. Exactly.